Good morning, everyone. And I am Ani Ryan, co-president of the Buddhist Women's Association. And I want to thank you so much for joining us this morning in honoring the members of the Buddhist Women's Association who have passed away, and also the founder of this organization, Lady Takeko Kujo. Lady Kujo was not only a dedicated humanitarian who had helped many people in need in Japan, but she was also an accomplished poet. Here is one of her beautiful poems, which expresses the interconnectedness and interdependency of life. It is also the English translation of Seiya. Who can ever fathom its timeless mystery? Million eyes when sparkling bright in the sable sky, touch my heart, my lonely heart with serenity. More than all the countless sands Ganges river holds are the infinite Buddhas who fill this universe. Ever watchful over us throughout day and night. Hearing this, my lonely heart fills with lasting peace. Uh, this was uh, Reverend Laverde's comment about the poem. This reminds me of the image of Indra's net, where each sentient being is a jewel in the net. To me, the stars in this poem represents the countless sentient beings, past and present, like the jewels in Indra net all interconnected, all reflecting each other, all watchful over us. Though lonely, her heart is filled with peace, serenity, and gratitude, knowing she is connected to all sentient beings. Perhaps this is what motivated her to selflessly serve the needs of others. And now we have, we'll have a recitation of the San Bucho, followed by Hyo Byakumon and the Juseke by Reverend uh, Laverne Sensei. As a representative of the Sangha, um, I will share the intentions and aspirations of this service. 
Today, on the occasion of this service, Kisaragi, a tribute to Lady Takeko Kujo and the BWA Memorial Service, we reverently come before Amida Buddha with the deepest reverence and gratitude for Amida's all-embracing wisdom and compassion. We reaffirm our faith in entrusting in Amida's primal vow. And although you're on mute, please join me as we chant the Jusegi together. Dagon Cho Segon Ishi Mujo Do Shigan Fumanzo Se Fujo Shogak Ga O Mudio Ko Fu I Dai Se Shu Fu Sai Sho Bingu Se Fu Jo Shogak Ga Shi Jo Bundo Mio Sho Cho Jipo Ku Kyo Mi Sho Mong Sefu jō shō gāk, bi yoku jīn shō nēn, jō e shū bōng jō, shī gū mū jō dō, i shō tēn nīn shī, jīn rī kī en dāi kō, hū shō mū sāi dō, Shōjō sānku myō, kōsai shū yaku nān, kai hī chī e gēn, mē shī kōn mō ān, hē soku shō aku dō, tsū dān zēn shū mōng, kōsō jō mān zō, i yōrō jīppō, Nichi gan shu ju ki ten ko om fu gen i shu kai ho zo ko se ku doku ho jo o dai shu chu seppo shi shi ku ku yo isai but gu soku shu toku hong Kanne shin jō man, toku i sangai o, nyo bun mu ge chi, su dan mi hu shō, ganga ku e ri, to shi sai shō song, shi gan ya ko ka, dai sen o kan do, Koku shō tēn ni tōu chin nyō kē. Nā man dābū 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 Gāni shī ku dōku Yō dō se i sai Dō Shin Ojo Andato
Nam Ami Dabit, 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 Nam Ami Dabit. Three treasures. Hard is it to be born into human life. Now we are living it. Difficult is it to hear the teachings of the Blessed One. Now we hear it. If we do not deliver ourselves in the present life, no hope is there that we shall be free from suffering and sorrow in the ocean of birth and death. Let us reverently take refuge in the three treasures of the truth. I take refuge in Buddha. May we all together absorb into ourselves the principle of your way to enlightenment and awaken ourselves your supreme will. I take refuge in Dharma. May we all together be submerged in the depth of the doctrine and gain wisdom as deep as the ocean. I take refuge in Sangha. May we all together become units in true accord in your life of harmony, in a spirit of universal brotherhood, freed from the bondage of selfishness. Even through ages and myriads of kalpas, hard is it to hear such an excellent, profound, and wonderful doctrine. Now we are able to hear and receive it. Let us thoroughly understand the true meaning of Tathagata's teachings. Namo Thank you, Sue and Junko. Uh, now I'd like to uh, give a short um, history of our guest uh, speaker today, Reverend Irene Goto. She was born, excuse me, she was born in Idaho, youngest of six, raised in Eastern Washington and retired in Seattle, Washington. Her past endeavors included being a Pan Am flight attendant. She was a volunteer coordinator for the public schools and she was an activity assistant at a skilled nursing care facility. She received her home economics degree at the University of Washington. She has one grown uh, daughter and one grown son, no grandchildren yet, but one grand dog. Uh, her hobbies are uh, taking care of her dogs, sewing, jogging, hiking, walking, and gardening. Uh, she says that she's very grateful for the pandemic, allowing her cousins to get together on Zoom twice monthly, getting to know their families better. She is very grateful that she has Shinshu to study. Reverend Goto um, became a certified minister's assistant in the summer of 2011 and received her Tokudo ordination in 2014. Among other notable speaking engagements, Reverend Goto was featured as a keynote speaker in the opening ceremony of the International 17th Sakya Dita Conference on Buddhist Women in 2021. Sakya Dita are the daughters of the Buddha. She supports Buddhist women globally, their leadership, and has worked to improve the lot of women monastics and Dharma teachers. So now I would like to present to you our guest speaker, Reverend Irene Goto. Okay, thank you very much um, for that introduction. I'm speaking to the Dharma school uh, students today first. And I would like to say first that um, it's a priv privilege to uh, talk to you. And I used to be a Dharma school teacher. It's been a long time though, since I talked to the little ones and you're not so little, I understand. So I've chosen to talk about a story that I wrote about my childhood. Actually, I wasn't a child. I was about going on 16 because the story is about me learning to drive. And I think maybe you, some of you might not know what a car being high centered is like. So let me briefly try to explain that. When your car gets high centered, it means that your wheels are off the ground because you drove over something too high. So in my case, this was uh, the side of a ditch. It created a bank and I couldn't um, drive off anymore. So let me um, read my story that I wrote last year. And this is about me on the farm. I don't know if you've been on a farm, but try to imagine being on an open field. 
This is called Parents and Patients. This is where I think I learned my, um, I think, best attribute of being patient. I must have been sitting in the shade of the pickup truck for half an hour. Finally, in the hot, still summer day, I heard the putt, putt, putt of the John Deere tractor plodding closer and closer. Papa was driving it toward me in the field of, of onions in the middle of acres of irrigated farmland in Eastern Washington. I was going on 16 years old and Papa let me drive. I had somehow driven the pickup truck into the irrigation ditch and it sat high centered on the bank. Boy, I thought Papa is really going to be mad. But he didn't say anything. He, would, he sat there for a moment beside me and he got out of the truck. He assessed its precarious position and started walking back toward the farmyard. He came back with the tractor to pull the truck out of the ditch. When we resumed our drive along the field to check the flow of water running down the corrugated rows, he said, Dostano, what happened? There was a lot of room on the other side. That was the extent of his comment on my driving. I remember that experience because dad didn't get mad. He was patient. Not getting angry is the essence of patience. My Buddhist name is Shaba, which means to be patient. I think I am patient. I am good at waiting, even though I do get mad. I try not to express it before I think about where that anger comes from. It usually comes from my own baggage, or in Buddhist terms, my own attachments. I think I learned some of that from my dad that day. My mom also taught me patience. I can still see her quietly looking out the front window, elbows on the windowsill, cupping her chin, waiting for Papa to come home from Matsutake mushroom hunting. As night fell, Papa finally pulled up in front of the house with Mr. Nita. Mom got out of her chair and went outside to meet them. She said, you got late, Osokunata. She didn't scold them, she didn't get angry. She may have understood that maybe they had been lost or had simply gotten carried away with a good colony of Matsutake. Both mom and papa surely felt a bit of anger for the inconvenience and worry they were caused. But I now understand that they considered causes and situations. My inexperience and learning curve for driving and Papa's eagerness and joy for mushroom hunting. They refrained from assigning blame and curbed escalation of anger. This allowed for joy instead of disappointment and hard feelings. Thank you, Mom and Papa, for your valuable examples of patience for a peaceful life. That is my story. It kind of pertains to us today when we have had to be so patient during these last two years, wearing masks and considering other people's feelings. So I hope we can continue to be patient and thank you for your patience today. Please join me in Gasho and recite Namo Amidabutsu with me. Namo Amidabutsu, Namo Amidabutsu, Namo Amidabutsu. Thank you, Reverend Goto, for your um, message about patience and your story about your family life and the farms up in Washington. It was a very insightful message, and I think it will resonate with all of us who listen to it. And now we will have the, um, the pledge.
read by our Dharma School students. Our pledge. Breaking out of my shell, I will share in the joy inside with that. I will speak gentle words, just like the kind of Buddha. Not becoming lost in my greed, anger, and ignorance, I shall think and act with an open mind, just like the calm and peaceful Buddha. Not putting myself first, but I will share the joy and sadness of others, just like the compassionate Buddha. Realizing the gift of life I have received, I shall strive to live each day to its fullest, just like the Buddha who tirelessly works to liberate it all. Thank you, Dharma School students, for the pledge. And now we will have Sumori Bay, co-president of BWA, to make announcements and give a presentation to the Sangha teens and junior YBA. Thank you, Mani. On behalf of the Buddhist Temple of San Diego, BWA, I would like to present small gifts to the junior YBA and the Sangha teens for your youth activities. Thank you for carrying on in our Dharma tradition. Accepting on behalf of the Sangha teens will be Paulina Kovarubias. On, on behalf of the Sangha teens, thank you for your gift. And accepting on behalf of Junior YBA will be Eva Yamamoto. On behalf of the Junior YBA, thank you so much to the BWA for your very generous gift. Dharma school students are now excused uh, to go to their um, classes. Uh, uh, to the breakout rooms, and thank you so much for attending today. Now we'll continue with uh, the adult portion of the service, but it was sure nice to have the uh, children participate in our service. Um, I will be um, chanting the Vandana and Tisarana, and then um, we will transition to our adult Dharma talk. So please join me. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Homage to him, the exalted one, the enlightened one, the supremely awakened one. Namo Kyebutsu, Namo Kye O, Namo Kye So. Udam saranam gachami, Dhammam saranam gachami, Sangam saranam gachami. Namo Amitabhas, Namo Amitabhas. Um, before I turn it over to uh, Irene Sensei to do our Dharma message, I just want to reintroduce her briefly. Um, Goto Sensei um, was, has been with the Seattle Bits Wing for a long time. And she was there when I first joined um, several, gosh, I don't even know how many years ago now it was, uh, over 10 years. But uh, Goto Sensei was very active she um, was always the temple, always doing things on behalf of the temple. And I was really fortunate because I really consider her, I consider her my senpai, um, my uh, mentor. Uh, she uh, and I went through some training together with Castro Sensei. We uh, also went to Kyoto together. And I can tell you from at a personal level, that she indeed lives up to her Dharma name, Shaba, which is patience, because it was a very, very tough experience, but I don't think that I ever saw Goto Sensei lose her patience. Um, and she just, through a very, very difficult time, she pretty much remained calm, very level-headed, 
And I can say that she has a streak of practicality and common sense and forthrightness, which I truly respect and appreciate. So, Goto Sensei, onegaishimasu. Well, good morning, everyone, at uh, Buddhist Temple of San Diego. Thank you, Laverne Sensei, for reminding me of what we went through. <laughs> maybe I looked patient, but maybe uh, inside it was just turmoil. And I thank uh, Smitty, Smitty Sensei also for inviting me to speak at your BWA and Lady Takeko Kujo Memorial Service. Today is Sunday, February 27th, 2022. It is an honor to be asked, and I am very pleased to join you all from Seattle via Zoom. As you are probably aware, another war began last week in Europe. Before I begin my talk, I invite you to join me in Gasho with palms together and listen to the words of the Buddha. Let us pause shortly after and reflect on his words. The Buddha said, wherever the Buddha treads, be it town or hamlet, there is no place that he fails to impact. The world is in harmony. The sun and moon shine serenely. Wind and rain come in timely order and neither disaster nor disease occurs. As the land prospers and the people live in peace, there is no need to deploy troops or arms. When people respect virtue and act out of kindness, they strive to be more courteous and foster humility. Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Amida Butsu, Namanda Ops, Namanda Butsu, Namanda Butsu. Lady Takeko Kujo wrote, unless we, re we rely on the Buddha to enlighten us, we cannot even hope for eternal peace. The Buddha's words are especially heartfelt today. So while life goes on in the United States without war on our soil, let us wish and pray for eternal peace for those in the midst of war. Thank you. And now to begin my talk, please join me in Gasho once more for a reading by Seikaku from the collected works of Shindan. With pledges of friendship in this life, brief as a dream, to guide us, we tie the bonds for meeting before enlightenment in the coming life. If I am behind, I will be guided by others. If I go first, I will guide others. Becoming true friends through many lives, we bring each other to the practice of the Buddha way. And as true teachers in each life, we will together sunder all delusion and attachment. Namo Amidabuts, Namandabuts, Namandabuts, Namandabuts. In the next few weeks, when the Buddhist Churches of America convenes, and uh, conducts its national council meeting, BCA will welcome our first woman president. The first woman president of the BCA, BCA in its 123 year history. The BCA Buddhist Women's Association and all Buddhist women have come a long way. This morning, I would particularly like to talk about how the Buddhist Women's Association also known as BWA and Fujinkai, came to be. It came to be with the help of Lady Takeko Kujo. The Buddhist Churches of America's incoming president is Terry Omori. In a recent article, Terry talked about her involvement with success in an increased membership at Vista Buddhist Temple. 
She said, you have to just have this awareness and keep adapting to things and think outside of the box. In the same article, VISTA President Ricky Schlesinger said that he, Terry, and her husband, Ford Omori, believe in community and Buddhist education as well. I think Terry's strengths in awareness, adaptability, and thinking out of the box are like those of Takeko Kujo's strengths. Takeko had the awareness and ability or adaptability to think outside the box. And she believed in Shin Buddhist education. These abilities bring us together today for this Buddhist Women's Association Memorial Service for BWA members and for Takeko Kujo. Let us not forget that it is thanks to Master Shinran who married a woman, a Shini, and produced a lineage of men and women, including the most noted of Shin Buddhist women in modern times, his 15 or 20 times granddaughter, who is Lady Takeko Kujo. So what happened or what shaped Lady Takeko Kujo and what did she accomplish? She was born in 1887 and grew up during the early Meiji period when society must have been relishing freedom, change and adventure after breaking out of a 200 year shell of national isolation known as the Edo period. Takeko's father, the 21st Nishihonganji Monshu, or abbot, allowed her to attend a kindergarten for children below their social class. At that young age, Takako was a quick learner who liked to help and engage with other children. Her father's sending her to a common school reflected his adaptability toward change. She eventually adopted, or rather adapted to home tutoring, which she found rather lonely. And she didn't especially like her koto lessons and practicing in isolation. But she did enjoy tea lessons because she enjoyed the sweets that came with the ceremony and because she delighted in delighting her father with tea. She was the apple of his eye. At age five, she especially adapted well to the arrival of her future sister-in-law, Kazuko Otani, who was age 10. She came to live within the household for five years to be educated in the Shin Buddhist traditions. Kazuko would need this education when she would eventually become the abbot's wife. Takeko and Kazuko became each other's best friend. I surmise from Takako's essays, which she expressed, which expressed her Shinshu appreciation that she was educated along with Kazuko in Shin Buddhist traditions and teachings. After all, her father was the Monshu or, or the abbot. Kazuko's marriage to Takeko's brother, Kozui Otani, eventually happened. And not long after the marriage, Takeko moved in with the newlyweds. Husband and brother Kozu, Kozui left for four years on a Central Asia goodwill trip. Therefore, Takeko and Kazuko lived together independently for about four years. Kozui returned home shortly after his father passed away and he became the 22nd abbot of Nishihonganji. Then the Russo-Japan War broke out. This was the impetus for organizing women to help the war effort. Kazuko and Takeko had the awareness to understand what was needed. Kazuko traveled and made speeches, imploring women to join the Behind the Guns campaign to comfort mothers, provide warm clothes and blankets, 
to see soldiers and sons off to war. Takeko managed the home front office duties. Both had the awareness of what was needed and the leadership skills and education and courage to organize the Buddhist Women's Association. Takeko marries Kazuko's brother, Baron Yoshimune Kujo, and moves to Tokyo. But one year afterwards, they go to London for his schooling and for his eventual employment with Species Bank of Yokohama. But she returns home alone after one year. He stays in Europe for 10 years. Sadly, Kazuko passes away a few months after she returns. Takeko returns to Kyoto and lives with her brother. Takeko must have missed Kazuko very much, having been together like sisters for almost 10 years. Before Kazuko passed away, she saw a need for a school for women with Shin Buddhist philosophy at, at its core. Takeko pursued Kazuko's dream with the help of another woman, Wariko Kai of Kendo. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wariko Kai of Kendo Jo Gakuin. Takeko submitted a prospectus that would eventually lead to the establishment of Kyoto Joshi Gakuin and Kyoto Women's University. A friend of mine at Seattle Betsuin attended middle and high school at Kyoto Josh, Joshi Gakuin. She said she is glad that she was able to attend those schools. And she said it is probably why she is Jodo Shinshu Buddhist. And she appreciates that she was never bullied, although she was a quiet student. Take, Takeko apparently kept a diary from a young age. Kenji Hamada wrote a brief biography about her using her diary as a resource. Lady Kujo began writing freely about her feelings and opinions in essays and poetry. One of her essays was published each day in the Yomi Uri News for 100 days in 1926. In 1927, those poems were compiled into a book titled Muyuge, Flower Without Sorrow. It was reprinted 400 times in 15 years. A recent translation by Wayne S. Yokoyama is entitled Leaves of My Heart. Her essays must have been a great influence on a great number of people, especially on women. Takeko's husband eventually returned to Japan after being away for 10 years. Then the great Kanto earthquake happened. Takeko volunteered to help where it was needed, helping the sick and the needy, rebuilding and de rebuilding the devastated Tsukiji Honganji Temple, opening, opening a free clinic that would eventually become the Ashoko Hospital. She designated that the royalties from her book, Muyuge, Flower Without Sorrow, be used to fund the hospital. Takeko continued to write poetry, a stage play, and an autobiography. She died of blood disease in 1928 at the age of 42. So like Terry Omori's strategy for increasing temple membership, Takeko Kujo and Kazuko Otani's strategies and emphasis on education are similar. Awareness, adaptability, and thinking out of the box supplemented with education. Together, I think they appreciated the Buddha Dharma and the Nembutsu. Together in their friendship, they supported each other like the BWA women do for each other. They gave each other self-worth and love 
which in turn gave each of them the confidence to pursue what they thought was right individually. In their endeavors, they each displayed examples of selfless giving, discipline, patience, diligence, concentration, and wisdom, all practices we can strive to follow and for which each of us can try to be examples for those who follow us. I wish our new BCA president, Terry Omori, success in her milestone endeavor. And I wish that we will all help her in our awareness, our adapt adaptability, and our thinking out of the box. As a close, I would like to extend my deepest condolences to those of you who have recently lost a loved one or loved ones. Osabishi koto de gozaimasu. It's especially hard to say final goodbyes during this pandemic. We have not been able to gather and comfort one another in person. But our loved ones come back to us as bodhisattvas. They guide us every day, reminding us of the Buddha Dharma and the Nembutsu, like Lady Takeko Kujo is reminding us today. Thank you, Amida Buddha, for allowing us to remember. To close my talk, <clears throat> please join me in Gasho. <clears throat> With pledges of friendship in this life, brief as a dream, to guide us, we tie the bonds for meeting before enlightenment in the coming life. If I am behind, I will be guided by others. If I go first, I will guide others. Becoming true friends through many lives, we will, we will bring each other to the practice of the Buddha way. And as true teachers in this life, we will together, Sunder all delusion and attachment. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namandabutsu. 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 Thank you for listening. And as our Seattle Temple President, Lian Nishi Wong, says each week, may you be touched by the Buddha's wisdom and compassion. Thank you so much, Reverend Goto, uh, for uh, giving us the uh, history of Buddhist women's leadership and also uh, expressing to us the um, importance of having a woman as uh, in leadership in our uh, organization. And I'm really happy to hear that Terry Omori has that position. And um, thank you again for your, uh, your messages today. We greatly appreciate it. And now we will continue with the, um, a pre-recorded reading of uh, the BWA Memorial List, and it will be given by Susan Yonakura and Yamamoto, Margot Spears, and Aki Tomiyama. Akiyama Yasu. Mrs. Chieko Sugiyama, Amano Momoyo, Mrs. Mikie Honda, Amano Nobuko, Mrs. Tracy Amano Mitchell, Amemia Mary, Mrs. Gail Amemia, Araumi Shin, Azuma Family, Azuma Tora, Azuma Family, Date Oto, Mrs. Jill Uda, Doi Kurume, Mrs. Derleri Yamada, Fukamizu Kimie, Mrs. Rochelle Carroll, Furia Iwa, Mr. George Furia Jr., Furia Takae, Mr. George Furia Jr., Hamada Liora, Mr. Gary Hamada, Hanano Mitsue, Mrs. Carolyn Skinner, Hashiguchi Fuji, Hashiguchi family. Hatawe Kura, Mr. Craig Inoue. 
Hill Gayo Mio, Mr. Ed Hill. Himaka Kazue, Mr. Michio Himaka. Himaka Setsuko, Mrs. Lynn Fujigami. Honda Fumino, Mrs. Mikie Honda. Hosaka Yuku, Mrs. June Hosaka. Imai Mine, Mrs. Fumiko Ohara. Ishino Matsue, Mrs. Hiroko Ishino. Ishizu Sadako, Mrs. Setsuko Toyama. Iwashita Tamiko, Mr. and Mrs. Setsu Iwashita. Iwataki Yoshiko, Carol and Patricia Iwataki. Kanimura A, Mrs. Midori Kanimura. Kaminaka Ayako, Mr. Wayne Kaminaka. Kashima Yoshiko, Mrs. Jeannie Kashima. Kawamoto Ito, Mr. David Kawamoto. Kawamoto Sakayo, Mrs. Mitsuko Kawamoto. Kawamo Kawasaki Kiyo, Mr. and Mrs. Tracy Kawasaki. Kawasaki Misawo, Mr. Ted Kawasaki. Kawasaki Toshiko, Mr. Ted Kawasaki. Kawato Yoshiko, Mrs. Nancy Nakatani. Kida Chieko, Mrs. Katsumi Kida. Kimura Hatsue, Mrs. Holly Heidinger. Kiono Ruth, Mr. Norman Kiono. Koba Michiko, Mrs. Ann Ong. Koba Shizue, Mrs. Ann Ong. Kodama Yukino, Mr. Norman Kiono. Kusaka Matsu, Kusaka Family. Mamiya Tamiko, Mr. David Kawamoto. Masumoto Yuki, Mrs. Chioko Masumoto. Matsumoto Dorothy, Mr. Troy Matsumoto. Mayumi Tamio, Mrs. Mitsuko Kawamoto. Moribe Chieno, Mr. Lee Moribe. Morime Moriyama Chieko, Mrs. Madeline Clogston, Muraoka Haruko, Mr. Roy Muraoka, Nabeta Ritsu, Mrs. Joyce Teague, Nakamura Fuji, Mrs. Jill Uda, Nakamura Hamako, Mrs. Yukiko Sugiyama, Nakamura Koyoshi, Mr. and Mrs. Jake Nakamura, Nakamura Pauline, Mrs. Jill Uda, Uda. Minoto, Minoto Rui, Mrs. Uda. Kathy Ferguson, Nishi Nobue, Mrs. Akiko Matsumoto, Nishinaga Masa, Mrs. Mani Ryan. Ochi Koyako, Mrs. Emmy Ochi, Ochi Kiyoko, Mrs. Holly Hardinger, Ogawa Hisayo, Mr. Steven Yagare, Ohara, Kisara, Mrs. Ann Ohara, Ohara Mitsu, Mrs. Fumiko Ohara, Okuma Mitose, Mrs. Yoshio Okuma, Omori Kyoko, Mrs. Shirley Omori, Osaki Wasa, Mrs. Ann Yamamoto, Ota Tomiya, Mr. and Mrs. Ken Ota, Ota Motomo, Mrs. Hatsumi Oto, Otsuji Ayako, Mr. Dennis Otsuji, Oya Fujie, Miss K. Ochi. Saito Shizue, Mrs. Georgiana Uta. Sakamoto Komeno, Miss, Mrs. Tracy Amano Mitchell. Santo Higashi Kiyoko, Mrs. Kikue Graver. Santo Higashi Sachiko, Mrs. Aki Tomiyama. Shigahara Yoshiko, Mr. Wilbur Shigahara. Shimizu Emi. Mr. Gordon Shimizu. Shimizu Shizuko, Mr. Gordon Shimizu. Suyoshi Yoshiko, Mrs. Ann by Christina. Sue Yaga, Sue Naga, Mary, Sue Naga family. Tachiki Aiko, Tachiki family. Tachiki Kimia, Kimia, Tachiki family. Tachiki Tetsu, Tachiki family. Takagi. Toshiko, Mrs. Alice Aoyama, Takahashi Husano, 
Suiyaga, Suiyaga family. Takahashi Kitono, Mrs. Ruth Forrest. Takashima, Helen Kikuko, Mr. Ron Takashima. Takashima Tsume, Mr. Wilbur Takashima. Takashima Yoshiko, Mr. Wilbur Takashima. Tanaka Tsuruye, Mrs. Chiako Masumoto. Tomiya, Mary Sayako, Mrs. Ann Yamamoto. Torio, Suna, Mrs. Betty Torio. Tsuneyoshi Harue, Ms. Miki Tsuneyoshi. Tsuneyoshi Sara, Mr. and Mrs. Muto Tsuneyoshi. Tsurodame Peggy, Mrs. Chioko Masumoto. Tsurodome Peggy, Ms. Carly Tsuruyoma. Masa, Mrs. Diane Yamada. Watanabe Sen, Mr. Gary Hamada. Watanabe Yoshiko. Akiyama. Masa, Mrs. Diane Yamada. Watanabe Sen, Mr. Gary Hamada. Watanabe Yoshiko, Mrs. Diane Yamada. Yagade Yukie, Mr. Stephen Yagade. Yagi Chieko, Ms. Christine Driscoll. Yagura Mary, Mr. Ryan Yagura. Yagura Naoe, Mr. Ryan Yagura. Yamada Kakue, Yamada family. Yamada Rosie, Yamada family. Yamada Suzy, Mr. Burt Masumoto. Yamaguchi Katsuko, Mrs. Donna McDonald. Yamaguchi Mary, Mrs. Donna McDonald. Yamamoto Shizue, Yamamoto family. Yamanishi Matsu, Mrs. Miyoko Yamanishi. Yamanishi Sawa, Mrs. Miyoko Yamanishi. Yamasaki Tetsu, Mr. and Mrs. Moto Tsuneyoshi. Yamashita Tome, Mr. and Mrs. Trace Kawasaki. Yanagihara Shizuko, Mrs. Sumi Yanagihara. Yano Betty, Mrs. Madeline Clogston. Yano Chio, Mrs. Ma Ms. Madeline Clogston. Yonekura Ryu, Mr. Ron Takashima. Yonekura Toyoko, Mrs. Susan Yonekura. Yonekura Yoshie, Mr. Ron Takashima. Yoshida Matsue, Mrs. Betty Torio. <laughs>
Thank you all for attending our special service, honoring those members who have passed away in the BWA and also honoring Takeko Kujo, Lady Takeko Kujo. Before we uh, end, I would like to thank um, many people who made this uh, service possible. First of all, I would like to thank Bill Teague and Kimberly Cruz for doing the technical part of it, the difficult part of uh, assembling everything together using um, Zoom technology. I also want to thank, thank all the BWA members who helped to organize this and to present the different portions of the service. I want to thank the Dharma School students for their reading and their participation, and for Lisa Umebuko, the superintendent, for helping to organize that. And lastly, and I would like to thank uh, Reverend Goto and also Reverend um, Laverne uh, for organizing, especially Re Reverend Laverne. She organized all of this, did a wonderful job in getting this all together. It was not easy. It was a first service of its kind this year, and we would like to continue to do this service again uh, in the future. So thank you all for helping to make this service a reality. And before we close, I'd like to read a poem from um, Lady Takeko Kucho, and then uh, doing a gasho afterwards. And the poem is um, uh, from her book, Leaves of My Heart, and it is translated by Wayne Yokoyama. Trapped in a world of chaotic change, we seek an eternal, unchanging existence. There is nothing to rely on in this fleeting world. Everything here is transient. There is not a thing to be proud of in this worldly life where our karmic conditions dictate that we spend our lives chasing after illusions. Sadly, we try to hide our spiritual poverty by wrapping ourselves in the finery of grand illusions. Exhausted, we must walk the dark path of suffering that stretches endlessly into this distance. How sorry I feel for people caught in this state. But when we openly lament the way we are, when we humbly place our hands in gasho from the heart, we will clearly see the bright torch raised high for lost and deluded seekers to gaze upon. Let's put our hands together in gasho. Namo Amidabutsu, Namo Amidabutsu, Namo Amidabutsu. Thank you again for attending this very special, important service. <laughs>